In this video, we're going to be taking a look at some of the most basic functions here in Easy Stone. Before we even begin to create any type of design, there are a few things that we have to understand about Easy Stone, some of the most basic uh, things. So the first thing we want to talk about is when you go to create a design, the, the circles that you ultimately are going to use to cut a template, those have to be a particular size. So, and we have to set those uh, ourselves. So the first thing you want to do is come to the miscellaneous tab and click on set stone sizes and spacing. And when I say click on it, I mean use your left mouse button. That's going to bring up this dialog box. Now you can see here we have our stone sizes, 6, 10, 16, 20, and 30. If yours are different, than that. Go ahead and put them in this order as you see. And then we have stone ranges. 2 to 2.9, 3 to 3.9, 4 to 4.9, 5 to 5.9, and 6 to 7.5. Uh, now, why do we have those stone ranges? Because a lot of people are confused as to what purpose this serves. Well, what this does is this tells Easy Stone that if we bring in a file from a third party, such as Bling Art USA or RhinestoneTemplates.com or uh, the Rhinestone World, whatever the case might be. If we're working with a third-party template, each of us are going to design our designs slightly different. So, for example, if we were to purchase a design from the Rhinestone World, an SS10 stone from the Rhinestone World might be 3.2 millimeters, for example, whereas the way we do it, we uh, put SS10 stones at 3.4 millimeters. And Bling Art USA might use 3.1 millimeters. And so really what we're doing here, because we want to be able to automatically convert those into whatever stone size we have determined is going to be our size. Um, so in other words, by default, we use 3.4, but you may have discovered that 3.35 is that absolute sweet spot. Well, then obviously that's different than 3.4. So what it's saying is, is if we import a design that, let's say the SS10 stones for that design are all done as 3.4, but we want them to all be 3.2, we would enter in a fixed stone size here, so it do all the conversions for us automatically. Now, you'll see this more in future videos when we kind of get into all that. But initially, you aren't going to know, probably, what your fixed stone size should be. And we actually have a separate video that talks about using our cutter test file to determine where your sweet spots are going to be for the different stone sizes. But for now, let's just enter in these values that you see. And then you can come back in and change them at some later point. So just go ahead and enter the values you see here. Now down here for the spacing, this is the spacing between stones. Now by default, we like to use a half a millimeter. So we type in 0.5. And then you can use a comma and enter in additional values. So we'll go ahead and save those defaults now. And now you'll see in your drop-down menu, you should have more options that you entered and also the spacing between stones as well. Okay, so that's what that does. Now, the next thing that we need to know is we need to know how to change our stone size. Now, of course, you can obviously use your drop-down list here if you like. But the quicker way to change your stone size, once you've set those fixed stone sizes, is you can use these buttons over here to the left. And just by right-clicking on our SS30 button, you can see it changes our stone size. 20, change the stone size. 4.8 for SS16s. 3.4 for SS10s. And right-clicking, uh, 2.6 for SS6. So that's how you can quickly change your stone size. So let me give you just a real quick example of, of where this could be useful. So let's just say I'm going to go to my stone tab. I'm going to set my stone size at SS30 and go into the drop stone function. And I'm just going to click, and everywhere I click, I drop a stone. But if I right-click and switch to SS16s, 
then I can just keep clicking and now I'm dropping SS16s and if I want to drop a few SS6s dabble in a few SS10s very simple right now to get out of my drop stone function I'm just gonna hit the escape key so it's quite handy to have these buttons here to be able to switch those stone sizes really quick rather than coming to my drop down list and then picking one and and then continuing on that way I just right click on any of those buttons and that'll set the stone size for the active tool now I guess as long as we're here we should talk about we've talked about right clicking on one of these and that will set the stone size for the next function but what if I wanted to take for example these uh, this SS30 stone and I wanted to make it an SS20 then I would left click on SS20 and that would change it to an SS20 stone and if you look down here at the bottom you see what it says it says this this stone has come from our standard library it is jet black and it's an SS20 now watch what happens when I click on SS6 not only does the physical size of the stone change but look at down here notice that it automatically changes the stone size here of what the description of this is and the reason of course we want to do that is because when we hit our stone range function or, or excuse me our stone use report down here that's what SR is it'll actually pick up the different stone sizes and tell us okay we have nine SS6 stones that are jet black from the standard library okay so that is can be quite uh, helpful as well so left clicking will actually change the physical size of our stones so if I select everything and set SS10 or excuse me SS6 everything is SS6 when I use my stone report you can see now we have 30 SS6 stones okay so left clicking will actually change the physical size of the stone and automatically rename it to its new size and then right clicking is just gonna set the form to the stone size so that when we go ahead and click on and add stones now it's gonna add SS10 stones if we right click change the size to SS30 now when we use add stone now you can see we have a circle of SS30 okay now the next most important thing after knowing how to set your stone size and also how to change existing stones to a different size the next most important thing of course is color now we do have a drop down list here where we can choose all of our different stone colors that exist in this particular library down here at the bottom of easy stone are all of your quick select colors so if I if I use want to change my stone color rather than clicking on the drop down list scrolling up and down to find the particular color I want all of my most commonly used colors are right here so I can switch to crystal just by right clicking on the first square I can switch to citrine, light cyan, cobalt blue, pink, hot pink, emerald, orange uh, this is capri blue, blue zircon, aquamarine, topaz and smoke topaz now as you use these the more and more you use it the more familiar you'll become with it and it'll kind of become second nature to you but you can also choose the colors here from the drop down list as well now there are more colors in the drop down list than there was space available across the bottom of the toolbar here so not every single color is available here but all of your most commonly used colors are so if I want to go ahead and set my stone color to citrine I'm gonna set my stone size to SS 16s and when I click on drop stone you can see I'm dropping SS16 citrines. Now I want to drop SS20 emerald green. And you can see how quick that is. And then of course we hit escape to exit out of drop stone. Anytime you're in a function and you don't seem like there's a way out, usually hitting the escape key on the keyboard um, will go ahead and let you escape. So by right clicking on any of these colored squares, changes the form so you can see here the form is now changed to hot pink just like over here with your uh, different stone size buttons right clicking change the form now if we were to select a few stones here 
and we left click on any one of these colors, then it will automatically change those colors to green. Like in this case, I, cl I left clicked on emerald green, and now you can see all of the stones are, have changed to emerald green. Or if I select the whole thing and left click on hot pink, now all the stones are hot pink. And what's interesting too is when I select on this stone, you can see it says hot pink SS20, but when I select on this one, it renamed it to hot pink SS16. So that when again, when I come in here to my stone use report, it tells me I have eight SS16 hot pink stones and I have eight SS20 hot pink stones. Okay, so that kind of gives you an idea of some of the most basic functionality that we know, that we definitely need to know. We definitely need a stone size. We definitely need to define some type of stone spacing. We know by right clicking on any of these SS buttons that will change our stone size in the form. And by left clicking on these buttons, it will take the selected stones and resize those stones to whatever stone size we selected here. So in this case, now we have SS10 size stones or SS30 size stones, whatever the case might be. Right clicking on any of these squares along the bottom will change the form color. So now our form color is citrine. L left clicking on any of these squares will take our selection and actually change the color of the selected circles. Now, that's just really the tip of the iceberg. But what I thought I would do now is now that we have just a few basics under our belt, what if we go about creating a design? And we're going to create a really simple design, but we'll showcase some of the different tools here. So we're going to go in and make uh, a circle using our ellipse tool here in Corel Draw. And the circle that we're going to be making is going to be two and a half inches. So I'm just going to come in here and you can see how I changed my circle size to two and a half inches. There's nothing magical about that size, it's just what I chose to do. Now, I want to use SS16 stones, so I'm going to right click on my SS16 square here. That changes my physical circle size to 4.8, and then I want to change my stone color to crystal. So I'm going to right click on my crystal square, and now you can see that the form has changed to crystal. Now we're going to go ahead and add stones. Now you'll notice I've already specified the spacing, which in this case is a half a millimeter. Let's go ahead and add stones. You can see it added stones around that circle. Now I'm going to select that circle of stones, and you can see as I do that, some of these different buttons light up. So this D is the same as this, delete stone pass. But if I'm on any other tab, we don't have delete stone paths available to us, but this is a function that we use all the time, deleting the stone path. So we have a uh, kind of a quick select button here when we're on one of the tabs that don't have delete stone paths. But what we want to do here is I want to clear stones because I just want to illustrate a point to you that if we choose a different spacing, so in this case, what we've, what we've defined easy stone to do is add stones that are four millimeters apart. So now when I click on Add Stones, you can see that we have quite a bit of spacing between each of our stones, and that's because there's four millimeter spacing. So let's go ahead and clear those stones again, and let's go back to a half a millimeter, and we're going to click on Add Stones. So now we've added our stones. Now we're going to click on the Delete Stone Paths button. Now if you look here, you can see there is a path there, that black path. These stones are stuck to it, so we're going to delete that path and now our stones are no longer stuck to the path. Now what we're going to do is select this stone up here at the top, hold our shift key down and select the stone at the bottom and we're going to talk about another function that's really quite useful. I use it literally probably in every design I ever do and that is the shift option with alt stones. So we can left click on add stones we can shift click on add stones and there's also an alt click option for add stones as if we needed any more options but once you use these different uh, keyboard modifiers you'll get used to them pretty easily so if we hit shift add stones you can see all it does is takes the two stones that we have selected and it fits what it can fit 
in between. Now what's also interesting, it's just a side note, if I were to select three stones and click on shift add stones, it actually tells us that we're doing something that's not proper. See, it's asking us to select two objects because we have three selected. So if I only had one selected and hit shift add stones, it would do the same thing. It says, hey, we need two objects and only two objects, so please comply. So again, we'll select two objects, shift add stones, and you can see it created this path of stones for us. And now I don't need the path that that stone is on. That path is automatically generated for us. It is useful from time to time because if, uh, if I go ahead and create a string of stones like that, I could double click on my path. And as I pull my path, you can see what would happen. My stones would flow with my path. So there are times, you know, if I wanted to create like a little yin yang design, look at how easy that would be to do. You know, you could just come in here and, and you know, create that pretty easily. Now what's interesting too, as we modify our path, you see our stone spacing getting wider and wider. And that's because our path itself is getting longer and longer. So once we have this, what we could do here is we could just come in here and if you click the plus minus, see how we can add additional stones or if we right click we could take stones away See, so you know you can kind of play with it and do some fun stuff like that um, that's not actually what we're gonna do for this particular video but you get the idea you know you do have some flexibility there on some of the different things that you can do and once you understand how everything works um, it's really great because it really makes the design process so much easier all right, so now we need to get rid of this path. So we'll go ahead and hit our delete stone paths. And then we're going to just kind of finish up this little peace sign that we're making here by clicking this stone and holding our shift key and clicking this one, shift add stones. And now once we already have one, I get a big habit of just flipping it over, making a duplicate and repositioning it. You know, you don't have to do it that way, and I don't think we will for this example, but let's just go ahead and delete those stone paths, and then all we're going to do is take this stone and this stone and do the same thing. Shift add stones, create the same thing, delete our stone paths, and there's just our little piece symbol, real simple basic design here. So the next step, of course, would be to select the entire design, check right here, check spacings, that's what C is for. It's also available here on the miscellaneous tab check spacing but I usually use it right here for check spacing and what that's going to do is it's going to check for any overlapping stones that are sitting one right on top of another and what it's telling us is that there are no stones on top of one another so we're good to go okay so the next thing I would do is just for fun let's just select a few stones like so and let's change the color so let's do yellow let's do a few stones in green and we'll do a few stones in red. Let's go ahead and throw a weed box around it so we're going to select our entire design and click on add weed box AW here. Now by default when we click on AW it's going to add a one inch margin weed box. Okay, That's just how I programmed it because that's what I typically personally use. If you don't like such a wide margin, we could do shift add weed box and that will do half of the default. Now, we always get kind of wrapped around the axle and give you all kinds of options here. If we right click on add weed box, we can get a margin and specify the margin. So let's say I specified my default margin to be 12 for this example. Okay, so now when I click on Add Weed Box, you can see I get this size of a weed box, which is 12 millimeters, which is roughly a half inch. And then if I select it again and hit Shift Add Weed Box, remember it's going to be half of whatever the default is that we specified. So it's going to be half of 12, which is 6, which amounts to a quarter inch margin for your weed box. So whatever you want to do, I like to go, I'm going to go back here to my default. I like a one inch margin. So there's my one inch margin. Okay. Now let's just quick finish this design up. So I would, I always make a duplicate. Okay. I'm going to simulate the stones. 
for my duplicate here. I can uh, make a selection and come into my stone use report and hit add dimensions and that will automatically add the dimensions of the design for me. And then over here to do my uh, export of my different templates, what I would do is I would select this and I would come to my miscellaneous tab. And this is one feature here in Easy Stone that will save you a whole big pile of money and is one feature that is uh, real special about Easy Stone that other macros don't offer. So when we click on Export Vector File, this is going to set up how we want our design to be color separated for our templates. And so in this case, I'm going to put the citrine stones and the light cyan stones on the same template and then have a second template for emerald green. And then what I'll do here is I'll just choose, I'm not actually going to export a file. Now we could. And the other thing that's nice too, especially for designers who are creating rhinestone designs for resale, is we can uh, set up the multiple types of uh, vector files at once. So we can export an EPS version, an SVG version, a, a plot file version, an illustrator version, a, a Windows meta file version of, of, of this uh, CMX file, which is a special cr type of CorelDRAW file. We can export any or all of these at one time, which is quite useful. So here we'll just type in mini P sign. And so it's going to create us an EPS, SVG, and a PLT version of this mini P sign. But in this case, because we're selling it to export only to the CorelDRAW file, it's going to ignore. It's not going to actually export any type of uh, actual vector file. But we could export the actual vector file as well. So anyhow, when I choose export files, you can see what it does. It gives us a color separation here where we have blue and red on one template. We have green on another. Okay, Rather than creating one template for every single color, that's kind of crazy for this particular design. All right, so that is just kind of a real basic overview of some of the basic functionality here in Easy Stone. And of course, we have many, many more videos that go a lot more in depth, but that should get you started uh, in at least creating this very basic uh, design uh, with, the, with this little mini piece sign. So I hope you enjoyed this one, learned a little bit more about what Easy Stone can do and how easy it is to work with. Um, once you understand some of the basics and our next video in the series is going to be creating a baseball design. So we're going to kind of uh, do these little projects incrementally um, and build on your knowledge here of Easy Stone. Thanks for watching.